Welcome to Charity Village Connects. Today we're talking about the advocacy across Canada for a home in government for the nonprofit sector. We are very fortunate to have a guest who's pioneered this new role in the BC Legislature. We are joined by British Columbia's Parliamentary Secretary for Community Development and Nonprofits, Nikki Sharma. Elected as an MLA for Vancouver Hastings in 2020, Nikki is a lawyer and community builder dedicated to making life better for people. Her legal practice focuses on representing Indigenous people, including residential school survivors, and she's a passionate advocate for reconciliation. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here, Mary. I'd like to start by talking about your role, and it's truly a historic one, um, within the BC government as Parliamentary Secretary for Community Development and Nonprofits. You were the first example of a home in government for nonprofits, something that's been advocated for in the sector for some time. Could you tell me, you know, how it came about and how that, uh, how you, um, how you perceived structuring that role within within your relationship with BC's nonprofit sector? Sure, yeah, it's a great question. Um, first of all, it started with the many years of advocacy from BC's nonprofits, along with, I know, others across Canada to say that, you know, we need a home in government. Um, I think it was really highlighted through COVID. Um, the COVID impacts that the nonprofit sector was facing were very different than um, other sectors. And, you know, I, I think we've all seen it, that it's been different, and certainly people listening would understand. But they were asking the BC government at that time, where's our home? Where do, who, where do we go to to talk about how COVID's impacting us and what our needs are? And so that really pointed out to um, the Premier that we needed to have something that addressed that, and hence my role came about from that. So uh, it was one of those, I think, positive outcomes of COVID, um, that the nonprofit sector has somebody that's there to advocate for their needs. Um, we gave a lot of thought to how we wanted to structure this. It's a bit of a startup within government. Um, I have to say that a, a first big part of my uh, first year, we're into year and a half now, has been relationship building, but also work within government to understand and to highlight the impacts of the nonprofit sector across the province. I think it's something that, you know, I feel like if I'm successful in my job, the nonprofit sector will feel like they have their seat at the table when it comes to all the policy that impacts them, having a better partnership with government and recovering from COVID. And, and so how did that sort of sense that you were really setting a precedent in a way for other provinces and even potentially the federal government, what were your most pressing concerns or objectives for you when you were setting up your office and, and, and trying to, I guess, structure your role and the way that you would deal with the nonprofit sector in BC? Um, yeah, I think we really spent a lot of time listening in the first six months to a year because I think what we needed to understand is what the key priorities were from the nonprofit sector. So what did the sector say that they they was top for them for government to work on? Um, I think that most of the first year was COVID related. So what we noticed was that um, some of the funding that was coming out and sometimes not intentionally excluded nonprofits. So some of the COVID recovery funding was blind to the impact of nonprofits or excluded nonprofits. So we really wanted to focus on what was happening at the time in government, which was us responding to the COVID um, pandemic as, and we're still doing that. Um, and so we, we got to work right away um, with that. I think listening and, and designing engagements that fit with making sure we were listening to all the different parts of the sector um, and engaging across the province was really important. In terms of my office internally within government, I see my work as cross ministry. Um, I exist within one ministry in government, but really nonprofits are partners or work across most ministries in our government. So my work really had to address that by engaging every ministry. So um, we knew we needed to structure it that way internally within government. Um, we also knew that that there would be something about elevating the, d the discussion about the importance of the nonprofit sector within government and without. So there's like a public aspect to that of just talking to British Columbians about how important the nonprofit sector is to our province um, and also to people internally in government. Because I think oftentimes the sector is full of a lot of hardworking but very humble people that, that talk mostly about how they're trying to make the world better and what their impact is on the people they start and not about how important they are 
to the province, and in this case, the well-being of British Columbians in a lot of way. And British Columbians have seen a lot of crises um, this this past year um, with natural disasters, climate crises, and and the pandemic. And the first groups to be at the door to help have always been the nonprofit leaders across the province. And I feel like it's it's my job to make sure that that's elevated and seen for the impact that it is it is having on BC. So it helps us be better partners to understand how we need to be partners with those nonprofit organizations so we can respond and increase the well-being of British Columbians. So, I mean, that is a great description and very thorough. I, I'd like you to take it to another level because I'd like for people who are in our audience who may not be as familiar with the issue or the advocacy that has been done, why is it important for the sector to have a, a home in government, as it's, as it's put? Uh, I, you know, I talked about the impact that the sector has on the province. So I think that having a home in government helps elevate that. But really, almost every policy that will come out of a provincial government or a government will either involve a nonprofit partner, impact a nonprofit, or um, be benefited from the work of a nonprofit because government is very much aligned with uh, the principles of a lot of what the nonprofits are doing in the community. So without a home within government that can help understand that at a policy level um, and at just a response level, it really, what I was noticing, uh, particularly under the COVID lens, those impacts were blind to a lot of government policy, right? That they weren't being seen because there was no voice to say internally, well, this is what is happening with the nonprofit sector, and this is why it's important, and this is how we have to respond. So, um, you know, I, I can see why uh, the sector's been advocating for a long time for a home in government, because a lot of the issues that this nonprofit sector deals with are sticky issues, right, within government, whether it's to do with the administration of grants and the, the kind of over, overly bureaucratic responses that they have to deal with. So you need to have some kind of sustained lens inside to actually figure out how we piece through solving those issues in, in a more um, complete way. So there's plenty of work to do. But I, I mean, if I wasn't here, for example, there wouldn't be a COVID and resiliency recovery fund that was for the nonprofit sector as a whole, because we heard and listened to the impacts on the sector. We wouldn't be thinking about how we do grants differently and how multi-year funding is so important and, and all those things that we heard in our engagements. Yeah. Well, I, I do note that you recently announced the creation of a new $34 million fund for nonprofits in BC for COVID recovery. And um, I'd really like you to do a deeper dive to explain how your new role in having a home in government um, helped in making this happen. Sure, yeah, so um, we listened for the first year about the needs and we, we, tr we talked with our different ministries that were doing COVID recovery grants saying, here's what's missing. And I think what became clear is that there needed to be something that was separate that addressed the, co the nonprofit sector specifically because the challenges were different. Like I heard from community members or nonprofits across communities that, we're experiencing higher needs in our communities. We know that COVID is making it so our job is harder to meet those needs. Meanwhile, we don't have the amount of flexible um, sources of, of income to invest in things like the technology that we need or the, the kind of transitional resiliency in your organization to do that. And it was impacted by COVID. And we just know that, you know, our staff and our team are burnt out. We've been dealing with this for a long time. So all of those things kind of came together um, and we worked with some key partners and community that were facilitating um, through like bigger foundations that are doing the work in some of the communities. And so the fund came out of all of that work. Um, it's, it sets a precedent in, in a lot of different ways that I'm very excited about. Um, one is that it's the first time a fund is for the nonprofit sector as a sector. So I think that's profound in a sense where we're thinking about it differently, like this is the impact of the sector, but it also um, will do some innovative things within it. So in terms of thinking about multi-year funding rather than the, the one you're thinking about re what resiliency looks like, which is investing in those things in nonprofits that are not program related, that are more about building up resiliency. Um, we also made sure to set aside um, at least 5 million of that fund and it's a matching fund. So we're hoping it'll grow with more people putting their money forward, but that $5 million at least would go to the New Relationship Trust, which is an Indigenous-led trust, because Indigenous nonprofits were telling us something different. They were saying, you know, not only did we experience 
the pandemic, but we also were experiencing the toll of finding unmarked graves, which happened in, in, in BC, the impacts of colonization, floods, and all these other impacts. So our communities are really needing um, our work as an Indigenous-led nonprofit, but we also have to compete for funding oftentimes with non-Indigenous nonprofits serving different parts of the community, and we just don't have the bandwidth to do that. So we really wanted to make sure that there was a separate stream, which is going to be um, brought in very quick or very early on. So Indigenous led decision making on how that um, fund gets distributed to Indigenous led organizations, which I think will, will um, you know, sets another kind of different way of thinking about how government um, grants out to, to, to nonprofits. So th there's different components of it, I think, that we'll learn a lot from so we can start to make different changes in other work that we're doing. Yeah, that certainly is breaking new ground and, and really, really fascinating in terms of developing a new way to look at supporting the nonprofit sector. Thank you for that. Um, I wanted to take a sort of a bigger picture again. You're, uh, of course, aware of the special Senate committee on the charitable sector recommended the creation of a secretariat as a home in the federal government for the sector in its report, Catalyst for Change, a roadmap to a stronger charitable sector. Do you anticipate that the federal government may also follow BC's lead? And um, how do you feel about that by breaking this new ground? Yeah, I mean, I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful. I'm, I'm excited that uh, a different part, in addition to my mandate, which happened after a year in, was to help to work with the federal, my federal counterparts and, and the federal government to advocate for the needs of the BC nonprofit sector. And what I've heard from the nonprofits in BC is exactly that, like we need a, a voice and a home in government. And, and so that's certainly something that, you know, I'll be telling and sharing with uh, my federal counterparts as well. I think it would be amazing to think about what could be accomplished for the sector if every level of government um, had the same lens that I'm able to do when I advocate for the sector within government. I think not only would the sector be stronger, but also you think about Canada would be stronger because the work that the sector does is filling in. I mean, I always say that the people that I meet are the type of people that don't look away from problems. They look right at them and they roll up their sleeves and they try to figure out how do I solve this for my society, for the environment, for the well-being of my neighbor. And that's a beautiful thing to invest in. And, and so having, having a home in government is really helped us put that lens as a government. And I hope that every jurisdiction in Canada follows suit. I think it would be, it'd be a great thing for the country. Well, I've spoken to a legal expert who has concerns that there may be a problem with concentrating influence in only one individual, that that may well make the nonprofit sector more vulnerable if that individual doesn't believe in the government support for charities and nonprofits as, as passionately as you do. And he references the experience in Australia as an example. And, and, I, and I wonder whether, you know, it's early days, but do you think this could be a problem or do you suggest safeguards that could be used to avoid this or... Or do you just not see it as a possibility? Um, well, the right person for the right job is, I guess, a good solution for that. You'd have to have somebody in a role that really sees the impact of the nonprofit sector, no doubt. Um, I, I actually see, I think, every day about how it goes beyond my role. So how do we build up the structures in government? So not only is it a continuing thing to have somebody like me, but how are the structures in government changing to respond to the sector? And, and that's why designing the role, I think, to be cross-ministerial to think about things bigger than just one person and one role, but as how the government operates as a whole. I mean, there's a lot there and I need, would need probably like 10 terms to do everything that I would wanna do because it, it does involve all the government, but I think that helps to structure the thinking differently and structure your approach differently. And that's certainly something that we've been thinking about a lot and how we've operated here in BC. Um, and if you, I think if it's designed that way, there's nothing that but benefit that would come from that because it's about staying, changing the systems rather than um, just the person, right? Uh, absolutely. And, and uh, your examples are, are really clearly an indication of that, uh, of how that could be effectively done. Um, I'd like to understand how you personally like to work with the nonprofit sector in BC and have you learned anything so far that would be helpful for nonprofit leaders to know if they, they want to engage with you about various issues that impact them? Yeah, so I, I've met with so many different um, nonprofits across BC and it's different in BC, much like different parts of Canada where there's a rural urban 
um, and the different it, the, there's differences in the impacts and the needs of of nonprofits in different parts of the province. Um, I think I think most importantly the the advice that I would give, and I think that's really uh, a testament to actually the people that work in the nonprofit sector. That at the very beginning, often when I meet with um, a, have a roundtable or meet with people as a government uh, official, the first thing they want to say is that you need to put more money in this issue, like housing or whatever their mandate item is, which is important. Um, and then it takes a minute to say, well, how do we support you better as a nonprofit? And how how is that relationship with government? And then the other issues come out like, oh, you know, we need more stable core funding. We need more like all of the things that are the things that um, are part of the things that I can change in my role. So there's something about the sector coming together to uh, clearly identify um, what those issues are, that's always helpful for government, right? It's always helpful for us to have the clear issues. And we've been able to do that work um, over the last year and a half to understand what they are. But, um, you know, I think I think having the sector think of, of itself as a sector and, and take on that importance of the impact that it has on British Columbians and proudly wear it, that, you know, we are a force to be reckoned with in, in this province and in the country. And, and government, you need us. You need us to do all the things you want to accomplish, and let's let's make our let's let's continue to work together in a good way. So, well, some inspiring words to them, and, and good advice, I think. Do you have any advice for those in the nonprofit sector who are advocating for this kind of change, a, a home in government, in our federal government, or in provincial governments across the country? What did, what advice would you give to them for that? Um, I think keep at it. I, I hear, I think the conversations are working. I think that the COVID has really t showed us how um, the nonprofit sector showed up and helped us through um, crises. Um, I've been, I've been learning about some really amazing and, and hearing some really amazing analysis that talks about the social fabric that nonprofits build in our community. And it happens slowly over time. You know, every day of the work that nonprofits that when you hit something like a pandemic or a crisis like we faced, that, that ecosystem and that infrastructure is already there. So you know where the vulnerable seniors are, you know where the youth are that need to be helped because those people know it in their community. Um, and so I think that, uh, that, that, that that level of impact is really evident right now. And so use that to have those conversations because people are keenly aware of, of the importance of the sector right now, I think. I couldn't agree with you more. There's a momentum that's grown uh, of awareness of the general population uh, of the important work that nonprofits and charities do, uh, particularly in a time of crisis, but all the time. So that, that greater awareness, I think, is helpful. Is there anything else you wanted to add to bring to the attention of our audience? Um, well, I just want to thank you. I think I think there are all these key institutions and and people like yourself and the work that you're all doing that help to elevate that. Um, and I think that all our work together is what's going to make an impact on this conversation and an impact for the sector and then the impact for the country. Um, thank you for your advice and the, those kind remarks. Um, thanks for your advice for the nonprofit sector. And I, and I really wish you well in your new and important role for the nonprofit sector in BC. And, and you really are, um, you know, a pioneer. So thank you for that as well. My pleasure. Thank you.